yeah, Rotary Clubs in Kenya. So that was pretty spectacular. So we're still letting people in. I notice we're up to 95, very close to our 100 mark. So we'll just keep getting people in because very shortly, I will introduce to you our speaker, our guest speaker for the evening, and I'm going to let you know how we're going to run the evening. It'll be slightly different to every other one we've done, but we've chosen to do it that way tonight, just to be a little bit different and to make sure that everybody gets all the information that we'd like to get across to you. So it's pretty exciting. And Paul, how are we going? Um, well, we've got 95 in. I'm still, they're still coming into the waiting room. So um, I will uh, let them in as they arrive. Okay, so those people who are already on, would you mind just going into the chat and putting your name in there and letting us know what district you're from? Are you from 9705? Uh, are you from somewhere else? And that's really good for us to know as well. So we know what our statistics are and also Geraldine and I know where you're all from. So we can certainly, um, recognize the huge network that Rotary is, and that's pretty exciting. So I notice people are really getting into the chat. We've got 976, oh, look at this, 9810, 9820. People from everywhere, how exciting is this? New Zealand, New Zealand. <laughs> Wow. Dandenong, people in Victoria. I hope you're all well down there. We're all feeling for you all, of course. 9820. 0705. Greg Wooten, where's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0705? Where is that? Or is that supposed to be 9705? And I can see that uh, my president, Sue Moffat from, Dist from Rotary Club of Orange Daybreak is on board. Hello, Sue, I'm glad you're on. And somebody said they can't type. Aha, thank you, Greg, 9075. Belmont in, uh, in Newcastle, 9670. How wonderful. I think you're probably ready to go, Mary. Okay, I'm thanks, slow Paul. Up. Okay. All right, everyone. So thanks for that. And as I mentioned earlier on, we've got people from all over the, all over the country coming on board here on our third of our series membership, membership series that my co-host Judy Ford and I have as, as membership officers of District 9705 have been organising for, for the last couple of months. So welcome, everybody. It is wonderful to see you here. A couple of housekeeping uh, notes that we need to remember for this evening. Could you please ensure that you are all on mute? Now, could you make sure you're on mute audio and mute video as well? We just like you to have your, your video off uh, as well as your audio off because that allows just the speakers to be on the view. Thank you. I notice people are talk, turning their videos off. Um, and put it onto speaker view so you can actually see the speakers. So just turn your own video off, but make sure you've got speaker view turned on. Could you also use the chat question section, which you've already started to use? Because with our first speaker, we'll be wanting some questions for her. And with our second speaker, who is our area governor, we will be wanting questions for her. So the way we'll be working tonight, everyone, is I'll be interviewing our DGN, Geraldine Rarenga. And it's a pretty exciting event that we'll be doing. We'll be able to do that tonight. I'll be interviewing Geraldine for the next 20 minutes or so, 15 to 20 minutes. After that interview is over, Geraldine will be able to answer questions that you will have already put onto the chat. After that, I'm then going to call my co-host, Judy Ford, who will introduce Andrea Grosvenor. Now, Andrea is one of District 9705 area governors. After Andrea has spoken for about 10 minutes, then Judy Ford is going to ask you all to open up your videos. And she's then going to ask you to put onto the chat that you might like to let all of these 100 people, 160 people know 
what you're doing in your clubs to have fun. Because tonight, our focus is on fun. What are we doing during these times, these COVID times, to have fun within our clubs? So the, the whole purpose, the big picture of these membership seminars is to share our thinking. So we're able to share our ideas and our thinking and our joys across this huge district and this great country that we live in. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask Geraldine to unmute herself because we're now going to start an interview. So we thought we'd do things slightly different tonight, didn't we, Geraldine? We thought we'd have an interview process. So I'm going to interview Geraldine for the next 15 minutes or so, because we thought it would be fabulous if you all got to know Geraldine Rurenga. And the best way to do that is by asking Geraldine some questions and getting to talk about understanding who this wonderful young woman is who's taking on the role of district governor in 2022-23. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Geraldine. So I hope you can all see Geraldine. She'll be on your speaker view and there she is. Hi, Geraldine. Great to have you on board. Thank you, Mary. Geraldine, as I mentioned, is, is, our, is our DGN in District 9705 for 2022-23. So Geraldine is just starting on her rotary training to become the district governor. And I think one of the wonderful things about the year that Geraldine will be coming on board is that's the year of Jennifer Jones. And I think we can all go, wow, how amazing is that? So welcome, Geraldine. Thank you, Mary. It's certainly one of the most exciting things for me that during my time as DG, um, Jennifer Jones will be the first Rotary International uh, president who's a woman. Um, I'm just seeing that there is some chat that, Mary, sometimes your uh, sound is breaking up a bit. So I might just point out another reminder to people to turn off your videos if you haven't already. That could be uh, what's causing uh, some of those issues. It would be too, in terms of the bandwidth and all that stuff. We have a few people that are okay, still Okay, Geraldine, on. let's start. I'm just going to mention there are a few people that still have their video on that would help if they would turn their video off so that we can um, get uh, our main speakers in. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. So Geraldine, let's start with the interview. Now, as I mentioned, here you go, you're a District 9700, 9705, District Governor 2223. But Geraldine, before we do that, what club do you belong to? And Geraldine, what is your current profession? Just so people know where you're coming from. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm based in Wagga Wagga and I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Wagga Wagga Murrumbidgee, uh, which was a club that was founded uh, to target uh, my demographic, young professionals. Um, my professional background, I was originally teacher trained and after a couple of years teaching in early childhood and primary, um, I then transferred to higher education. So currently I work as an educational designer uh, in my full-time capacity and part-time I also work as a lecturer in education. And you're at the um, uh, Wagga Wagga Murrumbidgee Club and do you have a, are you holding a position in that club at the moment? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm sure um, you are. <laughs> everybody does. Uh, yeah, so currently I'm on the board as foundation director. I have previously served as president of Murrumbidgee Rotary as well. So, so what's your, um, your current, well, your, your Rotary journey to get you to the point that you chose to go along and become the district governor or, you know, decide to be interviewed as a district governor? So what's been your Rotary journey? Uh, look, it's been, I, I had no idea that it would lead me here, I have to say. Um, when I first finished my undergraduate degree, I moved to Wagga to teach and uh, was just looking for a way to get to know people really. Um, and somebody, my mother actually recommend, mar recommended Murrumbidgee Rotary to me. Uh, and once I went along to their meetings, I, I think I realized more than just, you know, networking with people, I was also able to really contribute a lot to, com to the community. Um, I fell in love with the things that they were doing, um, but I could see the difference they were making. Um, and as I started contributing to that, I also realized how much I was learning and how much professional development it gave me. 
Um, so that was, I guess, my start in Rotary. Um, following that, then I had the opportunity to be on the board um, and that was facilitated in such a, a really valuable way for me that it, it, I was mentored into that position. So I had people with Rotary expertise who were happy to um, support me where needed and, and give me the responsibility that I needed. Um, and over the course of a couple of years, uh, wound up in the president's chair, as everybody does. Um, and that was really a pivotal point for me, I think, in my Rotary journey. Um, I mean, that whole year, I'm sure a lot of people in here know, is, can be a, a whirlwind. Um, but by the end of it, you know, I, I realised how much I'd enjoyed that year. And yeah, the, that two-pronged thing of helping other people, but also seeing that the difference that it made to me. Um, so yes, it was really a, a pivotal moment for me. Um, after I was president, uh, one of the incoming district governors for what at the time was District 9700, um, past district governor John Glassford, he actually put the call out that he would like uh, members of his district board that were young and women. And that was, that was really encouraging to me to see it actually put out there in, into, into the district um, that that would be supported if I, if I wanted to be involved with the district leadership. Um, so I gave that a crack. Uh, I was working in the uh, role of district trainer, which again, you know, I was able to contribute my expertise in education um, and use that in different contexts as well. But I could certainly see the benefit of building capacity um, within our district. Exactly. And I think that's when I first met you, Geraldine, when we were working, um, you were working in that trainer role. And uh, so I was working alongside you. So I know when I met you then, I was really impressed with this young woman. And I thought, wow, she's going to be, she's going to move forward in Rotary. So congratulations to that, because we all know, Geraldine, you're one of the youngest women we've had in this role. So it's a pretty awesome task that you've taken on board. Now, I notice on your jacket, you've got a very interesting little badge there. Uh, it seems to be a shoe, a stiletto shoe with a little rotary badge on it. Yes, it is a women in rotary badge. Um, it, it's one of my favourites because, I mean, it's something that I'm a strong advocate of and it's an easy way to wear my heart on my sleeve in that regard. <laughs> So let's just follow that track down a little bit. Y y women in Rotary and um, what, where are we with the women in Rotary thing, Geraldine? What do you think about that? I mean, you and I probably think along the same lines, but what's your view and, and how do we get more women into Rotary? Yeah, good question, Mary. Um, and I'm sure that the answer is probably different depending on what, what context a, a club or a, a district has. Um, but look, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity for us to grow our membership base, um, but also have those different perspectives. I think it's really important that if we're serving the community, that we uh, embody the perspectives that are in that community. And that means, you know, being representative of, uh, the, of, of all demographics. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. And, we, and we need to do that, don't we? So, so Geraldine, you've got a... You've got a bit of a journey to pursue. We've looked at your past journey, but now there's a journey that you're just embarking on now. Can you tell us what you've got to now go through before you finally become DG, first woman at your age, 9705? What's yeah. that journey? It's, uh, look, when I think of it all in, in one go, Mary, it is, um, feels a little overwhelming. Uh, so I'm, you know, prepared to take it step by step. Yes. Um, but I am really looking forward to it. And I think um, the way that uh, this journey is mapped out by Rotary International does ensure that um, you can take it step by step. There's a lot of training uh, that Rotary International does with you. So that will prepare me for the role. I'm also working closely at the moment with uh, the District Governor Michael Moore and District Governor-elect uh, Leo Farrelly to ensure that we have consistency uh, throughout that leadership in, in the district. Good. And that's what we need. We need to have the consistency. We can't have a stop-go mentality, can we? It must be consistent. 
Um, so, but I know one of the platforms that you stand on, other than women, it's the millennials in Rotary, because we have to we have to keep Rotary going, don't we? And one of the issues we have at the moment with any service organisations is finding people to come on board. And our young people seem to be reluctant. But what are you finding and, and what can you tell us, Geraldine? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, another huge area of opportunity for us. Um, I do have a slide prepared about uh, millennials, which I can share. Um, that might just take me a, a little a second to get ready. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, oh, sorry, it's just being a bit of, uh, how do I do this? Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so you're able to see the slide that I've put up there? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So throughout this journey, because like I said, it is a huge opportunity for Rotary to um, increase their membership base and increase uh, their impact in the world. I've been doing a little research around millennials in the workplace and how they feel in volunteer organisations. And there's increasing literature about that. Of course, a lot of us will be aware that Rotary isn't the only uh, charity organisation that's looking at this. Um, so there's a few things here up on the screen uh, in regards to what millennials expect and what they're looking for in those roles. So can you just expand a little bit on that? I'm just going through, through it now and I'm looking at some rather interesting comments that you've got there. There's one there that says seek purpose. What does that mean? Uh, so seeking purpose is really around, I guess, the fact that millennials have grown up in a world that is, yes, pretty in instantaneous, enabled by technology, um, and we are finding ways to make things flexible and convenient. Um, so at the end of the day, what is the purpose in what we're doing, and what's the best way, the most efficient way to get there? Um, so that can be a, a whole range of different things. So our club, uh, I guess we look at it from a perspective of um, how we're distributing our bulletin. Um, because we're mostly millennials and all working, we can be quite time poor. So we uh, realize that a bulletin is for communicating information out and we use our website and our Facebook page for that because instead of having a secretary sit down for a couple of hours once a week, uh, we can do that quite quickly and efficiently. We can share that role around and we meet our purpose there. Wow, so you use your Facebook as, as a way of doing that. That's a Fantastic idea, actually. Um, yeah, and there's another one here that I'm interested in too. Um, value over attachment. What on yeah. earth does that mean? <laughs> this is a really interesting one. And uh, I suppose it can be quite complex. But what a lot of literature has found is that um, because millennials have been found to be really driven and really socially conscious, that's what they value, I guess, over um, brand loyalty, for want of a better term. So for them in a working capacity, um, if they're working for an organization and everything is fine, except that particular organization um, isn't interested in environmental sustainability, um, it's quite likely that that person will go looking for other roles and that for a workplace that matches their philosophy um, because it's important to them to be uh, to have integrity in those values and to have that purpose with what they're doing as opposed to the attachment that they might have in that safety zone. So therefore, let's transport, transport that into Rotary. So they would then see if they belong to Rotary that that value of Rotary, service above self, giving to others, and now we've got the environment on board, um, that they would see that value. And, and if that was made explicit to them, they would more likely join a, an organisation such as Rotary? Yeah, absolutely. That's what they're looking for. Those values that match their own that they can, um, yeah, absolutely support. Oh, okay. So, so that really makes sense then in trying to get more of these young people on board. Um, so the people who are out there watching this, um, some of those are very, very good points for us to keep an eye on, I think, when we are looking for um, millennials and how, how we can provide that feedback for them to say this is what we believe in in our, in our particular club, this is what we're doing. And if it matches their values, they're more likely to come on board. Yeah, makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. So 
any other comments about any of those? I was just looking at a couple of those. They have a high value on relationships too. Yes, and I guess a lot of these tie into each other. So um, high value on relationships is a good one that ties into desire for feedback and open and frequent communication. And the best example I can give uh, in regards of that is my experience in Rotary and uh, how impactful it's been to have a mentor. Um, and I've had a number of mentors in different capacities and they haven't always been uh, formal mentoring agreements. Um, but having a relationship that's uh, with someone who can support me, who's open to listening to my ideas as well, um, that's really where I've placed a lot of my, my value in how I've yeah, spent my time in my Rotary journey. Absolutely, and I, I totally agree with you. And the mentors in Rotary are critical. And I know there are some clubs who actually physically say, one of the things that we do is we mentor our, our younger people and they set them up with a mentor. So some mm -hmm. people make it quite a, a definite process within their, within their um, club. Um, there is a question here. It says desire for feedback. A question has just come through. Does that feedback always have to be positive for these people, for these millennials? No. Well, this is interesting because part of that feedback, uh, what I'm constantly looking for is how to improve my practice. So I don't necessarily want to be sledged. Like I don't want, you know, I don't want to hear terrible things, but I want to hear, look, uh, the way that you did that, we can really improve on that. So what are some, you know, and they might pose the question to me, like, how do you think you might improve that for next time? Um, so that feedback doesn't have to be, you know, the constant, uh, what's, what's the one that always gets pulled out? The, the participation award, you know, that's not, no. really what that feedback is about you know um but yeah honest feedback and if something can be improved that's what we want because the purpose of that feedback is to improve our practice and i think that probably sometimes need to be pointed out to them doesn't it that uh yes we need to it's it's about improvement it's not about crit yeah. criticizing it's about improving and critiquing. Thanks, Geraldine. You, could you, would you mind taking that yes. off now? And we'll just go back and we'll continue our conversation for not a lot longer. Um, Geraldine, you're going to go in as 2022-23, and that's going to come up very quickly, and you know that. After you've had your 22-23 year, Geraldine, what will you be able to walk away with and say, that's what we did in my year? What's your vision for that year? Um, what I'm really hoping there in a broad sense um, is to grow Rotary in those areas of diversity that we haven't tapped into uh, as much as we possibly could. Um, and my main reason for that being what I want to walk away with is that in order to ensure a Rotary legacy, I mean, we know that the work that we do is incredible. Um, and certainly this year we've seen uh, that it's really needed. Um, and I think, it, you know, we have such a great opportunity to empower young people and build capacity in our young leaders to take on the charge because um, if they don't, you know, the alternative isn't so great. So in order to ensure that Rotary legacy and, and, and yeah, grow what we do. Absolutely. And I think, um, and diversity is a really critical word for Rotary, isn't it? I mean, e even in Australia, we have a much di more diverse population. And, uh, and I know even in Orange, we have a number of Sudanese, Nepali people, Indian people, lots of women who want to join Rotary. We need to be more diverse, don't we? So I think that's absolutely where we need to go. Geraldine, thank you. Do you have any other comments that you'd like to make to, to the 105 people that we currently have on board about your incredible year? Uh, look, I would just say thanks so much for... Um tuning in um, and that, you know, I am really looking forward to what I'll be learning in the next few years, you know, ticking that millennial box of how I'm going to improve my practice, but um, also really what I can contribute. And I think it's important to have, you know, an, an open line of conversation um, between the district and the club. So I'm happy at any point to, to hear from clubs. Great. And I guess my final question to you would be, how are you going as a young woman in Rotary going into that very important role? What are you What are you hearing from people? Uh, a whole range of things, <laughs> really. Um, I have actually been I've been so encouraged by the amount of support that I've 
received. Um, and again, because obviously I, I value those relationships. So it's been uh, really excellent to hear from people that I've, you know, crossed paths with in the past, uh, get in contact um, and have that support. And I mean, at times it's in intimidating and certainly I've had a few hard questions put to me, but uh, look, it's, it's all a challenge and I'm really looking forward to it. Cheryl, and I'd like to thank you and say it's all part of the journey and uh, all part of the learning and we're all here to support you, otherwise we wouldn't be on here tonight. So thank you, Geraldine. And uh, I'm now going to hand it, I'm going to turn my video off and Geraldine's off and I'm going to hand over to Judy. Thanks, Mary. That, look, that was a fabulous interview. Well done, Geraldine. I think we're going to have a wonderful year when you actually get to be the district governor. Now, Going from one strong woman to another strong woman, I'm now going to introduce to you Andrea Grosvenor, who is a member and past president of the Rotary Club of Queanbeyan. And uh, she was also assistant governor, which is, so she's well, well um, practiced in what she's now doing, going from just a handful of clubs to very many clubs. And you may also know her because she's also very, very involved in RAM, which she may mention, but I will leave that to her. So over to you, Andrea. Thank you very much, Judy. Oh, look, just mention Ram, just in passing, that's Rotarians Against Malaria, in case people don't know. But um, first of all, I'd just like to acknowledge that I'm speaking this evening from Ngunnawal country, just outside of Canberra, and I'll pay my respects to Elders past and present and extend my respect to um, uh, uh, Aboriginal and Torres, Torres Strait Island people who may be participating in this meeting this evening. I've been asked to talk about how Rotary Clubs are dealing with the COVID-19 world we're finding ourselves in and uh, provide some examples of some of the things that clubs around the district are doing. Um, so I'm calling the talk Rotary Clubs in Interesting Times. I'm going to talk a bit about keeping club members engaged and active, club project and community activities and fundraising. And I don't pretend to have the answers to current predicament. I'd love to hear your experiences and ideas, and I'm sure that there are lots. Well, I know that there are. I know there's all sorts of fantastic things being done across the district and, of course, more broadly. And uh, I want to hear what you're doing um, and how you're having fun as well. That's something that's really important, as has been mentioned, how we have fun. Um, I'd also like to talk a little about the special issues relating to being a small club in this environment. As Judy mentioned, I'm in the Rotary Club of Queenby and we currently have 10 members and uh, a small club, but um, we, we, get, we get along well, actually, we, we, we do okay. Now, first of all, one of the big issues, of course, facing Rotary Clubs is how to keep the club together and members engaged when face-to-face -face meetings are constrained or in some cases can't be held at all. It was really pleasing to hear during the early days of lockdown when no one was going anywhere much, that clubs were organising contact groups among members to make sure that everyone was contacted by another member of the club at least once a week, to check in, to see that they're all right, and to see if there was anything that was needed. This is important when a new and scary situation takes away one of your social supports. Of course, the fairly obvious solution for club meetings adopted by pretty much all of the clubs in the district has been to hold meetings remotely via Zoom or another internet-based service. The technological solution was picked up very quickly by most clubs. We already had two e-clubs in the district, and so the concept and practice of virtual meetings has been with us for some time. And I noted with interest that age has not been a barrier to picking up the technology. In fact, many older Rotarians prefer to log into a Zoom meeting. You're not potentially uh, exposed to the virus if you're in one of the vulnerable groups. You don't have to drive at night, which I, I just had cataract surgery and I was really reluctant to drive at night until now, but now one eye at least is, is working really well. Um, and you can sit at a meeting in the comfort of your own home in your track pants and Ugg boots. Or is that just me? But anyway. Um, and you can join the meeting from wherever you happen to be. A real advantage of remote meetings is that you can have guest speakers from anywhere in Australia or the world. District Governor Michael has been conducting most of his official visits 
to the clubs spread across a district bigger than England via Zoom. This week, I gave a presentation on Rotarians Against Malaria to the Rotary Club of Liverpool West. Um, it suffered from some transmission difficulties due to um, broadband issues, but nevertheless, I was there uh, on the screen most of the time, talking to people who were about 300 kilometres away from me. And in a real coup, the e-club of Brindabella will be hosting RI President Holger Kanak at one of its meetings in coming weeks. And I think that's something that, that uh, is to be lauded and uh, really quite excited about. The Zoom boom also lets us hold meetings with clubs that aren't in our local neighbourhood. And I do strongly encourage clubs in our newly created District 9705 to find a club on the other side of the Hume Highway, so within our district, but perhaps in the other the half, um, that meets at the same time as yours and to hold a joint virtual meeting. I mean, maybe you can do a trivia quiz or some other fun online mixer to get to know each other. You never know who you might meet or what opportunities might open up for joint activities or projects. Of course, the big disadvantage of virtual meetings is the loss of the fellowship and the fun you get from face-to-face -face meetings. The camaraderie, the side conversation, the interesting tidbits you pick up that so often lead to new ideas and ventures and friendship just can't be replicated online. I note that some clubs are using virtual breakout rooms on Zoom for informal chats, but it's just not the same. And fun outings are certainly very constrained at present. Um, I was doing a presentation by Zoom a few weeks ago and I had to I was actually giving part of a presentation, so I thought I'd better dress nicely. Um, so I put on a nice top and some jewellery and did my hair and I put on lipstick and I was about to reach for the perfume bottle and then I realised it wasn't smell-o-vision. Um, so it's not quite the same, but uh, anyway, we, we're adapting. And one of the themes that I am hearing from clubs is that members are itching to do something. We joined Rotary because we're people of action and we want to do good in the world and in our local community. It's so frustrating if you feel that all you can do as a Rotarian right now is dial into Zoom meetings. And the postponement of our wonderful youth programs, the inability to travel with Rourke's projects and the cancellation of so many of the big significant events that we look forward to each year is really quite devastating. It can also mean that club members lose engagement and drift away from Rotary. But there are lots of Rotary projects and activities that are still happening in the district. Maybe not so many big ticket items, but clubs are keeping busy. And just a few of the things that, that I know of from the clubs that I deal with. Um, Rotary Club of Canberra Western Creek commenced and is continuing its project to propagate and grow 2,000 or so native plant seedlings for parts of the south coast that were devastated by bushfires. Canberra Sundowners held a sewing bee at a member's home within COVID rules, I might add, um, to put together packs of useful items for people diagnosed with medical conditions for the Power in People group. And they're also sewing face masks now, I see. Um, a Rotarian in Bathurst has started a sewing circle to make masks to distribute to homeless people. Rotary Club of Canberra East has reshaped its iconic Floriard Gnomes project that many people in Canberra and Canberra region will be familiar with, um, seeing gnome painting at uh, the annual Floriard Festival. It's been going for 20 plus years, I think. But uh, Floriard is cancelled, but um, reshaped to have small events at different centres around Canberra and Canberra East has gnomes present at those locations and is also engaged with uh, schools to, for children to paint the gnomes as they've always done in past years and to still hold a competition for best painted gnomes in different categories. Um, unfortunately, we won't be making money out of that like we normally do, because, but uh, nevertheless, it's still happening and there is still a, a gnome Floriard presence uh, in Canberra. Uh, and of course, the Rotary Club of Billy Griffin is still delivering peace polls to primary schools 
around the district and around Australia and has organised scaled down but still significant ceremonies to ring the peace bell in uh, Canberra Nara Park in, in, in Canberra. And of course, I might add that Bombala Rotary is still providing catering uh, at the community centre. And uh, from the various club newsletters and bulletins that, that I get to see, I can tell that Rotarians haven't lost our sense of humour. There are lots of jokes and memes and uh, cartoons being shared. Um, some of them funnier than others, but I think all worthwhile. And it's a great way to, uh, to just keep our spirits up while we might not be able to get together and have that fun in person. Now, you might not be able to hold major events, but there are still many worthwhile things that you can do at a local level on a small scale, such as small working bees or maybe shopping for elderly people. Um, Queenbean and Jerobombra clubs will shortly be repainting a pergola in a park in Queenbean that was originally established by Queenbean Rotary. It won't take a lot of people, it won't take a lot of time, but it is something that uh, the council has asked us to do and it, it makes sure that our presence in the community is, is still uh, being felt. I know that many clubs already work with local organisations such as the Salvation Army, Meals on Wheels, etc, etc. If your club's at a loose end, I do encourage you to contact groups like these or your local school or hospital and see if there's something that you can usefully do at this time that's within the rules, within the limitations, but that is still providing value and is being seen. It's really important to try to stay visible in the community. I mean, this is a key to being relevant, valued and useful and can also help attract new members. There are a lot of people looking for ways to participate in worthwhile activities at present. Um, one of my own experiences, my husband has been working in wheel, Meals on Wheels uh, as a volunteer for a number of years in Queanbeyan. And uh, when uh, uh, COVID hit, all of the, the drivers and volunteers aged 70 and over or who had medical issues were grounded. So they, were, they put the call out for more people and I thought, well, I can, this is something I can do. But a lot of other people, the, uh, the manager of Queen Bee Meals and Wheels said that she'd been actually inundated by people volunteering. And uh, one of the things that Meals on Wheels are doing is um, shopping for elderly people who now can't or don't wish to leave their homes. Um, and I think that that's something where Rotary could hook into if, you're in, if, you, if that's available and you're interested in doing that. Um, and I'm sure that many of the other charities, church groups, what have you, are are around um, where you don't need large numbers of people and can be done in a COVID safe, COVID safe way. I also encourage those clubs whose activities are still happening to consider putting out a call to other clubs to participate. We can always use more helping hands at barbecues, markets, car parking, or anything else that you've got going on. And uh, if, uh, I know that, that some clubs I've talked to where they don't have anything much of their own uh, at the moment, a lot of things have been cancelled. I, I was told, look, people just want to get out and do something. And so I'm encouraging people, talk to them, people in other clubs. And for those clubs who do have activities, please make it known and do put a call out to uh, Rotarians in other clubs to uh, share in your activity to help you out or, you know, or just turn up and, and be part of uh, what your project is. So I've mentioned that I'm involved in Rotarians Against Malaria. I know that many Rotarians value Rotary's international service projects. It doesn't look like we'll be travelling overseas anytime soon, but that doesn't stop the many projects that are already underway uh, offshore. Um, you know, it will be going, they still need funding. They always need more funding. They need project management and they need checking in on from time to time. Um, I note that the Rotary Club of Ginandera was recently awarded a district grant to support uh, RAM's work in our region, helping to buy bed nets and uh, insecticide is, is a really useful thing. And we can do that from here. We, don't, we can do that virtually by remote control. We have partners in those countries, we have partner Rotary Clubs that we've developed relationships with. Um, 
And so we can, you know, we can talk to them and, and it, it's not all stopped. It doesn't have to be going somewhere and, and building a house in the Solomon Islands, um, you know, as, as fun and useful as that is, we can still uh, work internationally uh, from our own home base. And we can also spend this time planning for future projects and engaging with our partner clubs in other countries. Our newfound mastery of Zoom can help us stay in touch around the world and keep us keep up with the progress of our projects. Now, I want to touch briefly on fundraising. A lot of the events and activities that clubs usually rely on to support our causes have been cancelled or scaled back. Most clubs are facing very reduced incomes this year. And I think that's just a matter of something that we're going to have to live with. Um, there are things that we can do to keep bank accounts turning over though, even at a reduced rate. But many clubs that are meeting virtually are asking members to donate the money that they would have spent um, attending a physical meeting to the club instead. Some clubs are using that for Rotary Foundation, others for particular uh, projects that they have locally. Um, but that's, you know, that, that's up to you, but that's one way of, of uh, getting a little bit of money. You can also conduct activities online, um, auctions, art shows, sales of products, um, trivia quizzes, any different types of um, fundraising activities can be done online. Uh, Woden Daybreak Club is continuing its annual mango sale fundraiser. And I can assure you the mangoes are real, they are not virtual, but it's, the organisation is all done online. And uh, I think many of you would be aware that the e-club of Brindabella has ingeniously designed Rotary District 9705 face masks for sale, um, which I think is great. And, and uh, for, when, for those of us who can get out and do barbecues or get around the community, having a Rotary branded mask to wear is just an extra, extra way we can show the flag. Keep an eye on what other clubs are doing through district and club newsletters, Facebook posts, and Rotary Down Under. Now, finally, I've been asked to talk about what it's like to be part of a small club or um, a boutique club, as I prefer to call it. My club, Queenbian, currently has 10 members. In the six years I've been with the club, numbers have ranged from seven to 13. And yes, we are limited in the size and scope of projects we can undertake and the amount of money that we can raise for good works. But having being in a small club does have its advantages. First of all, it's club policy for our club that all members are board members. That means every meeting is a de facto board meeting and we can make decisions any time a quorum is present, whether that's at a meeting or whether it's um, serving sausages at Queanbeyan markets at a barbecue. And we found that flexibility actually really, really useful. Um, communication within the club is really easy. With only 10 of us, the, the email list is very small. We try to keep everyone informed about everything and all members get a say in decisions. And we all share the responsibility for making the club work and for doing our projects. There's nowhere to hide and no one can be left out. That said, we can only be effective if we work collaboratively with other clubs. When we're asked to do something, our default position is to say yes first and then work out how we're going to do it. We hold joint monthly meetings with the Rotary Club of Queenby and West. We have a very close relationship with them. And the two clubs enlist each other's help when extra bodies are needed. And we do joint projects um, pretty often. We regularly participate in activities run by other clubs in the district. For example, we've had our own nominal gnomes weekend at Floriard for years and work closely with Canberra East uh, on other aspects of the gnomes project. And being an outward focused club, because there's not enough of us to be an inward focused club, we take an active role in district events like conference and assemblies when they're on. And we currently supply the district rocks chair, uh, my, uh, my colleague, past president Keith Edmonds, and uh, an area governor, that's me. 
Um, I'd like to mention briefly another small club that I came across last year that I was impressed with, not in our district, but not too far away, the Rotary Club of Oberon. With only eight members, they hosted a Rourke's Eastern Region weekend meeting last year. It was a great weekend and it proved that size isn't everything. And I understand that they also meet with the local Apex Club, which makes a lot of sense. If you've got a couple of small service clubs in the same location, you're trying to do things in the same community, why not join forces um, when you've got similar objectives? So I'll just end my talk by reiterating, reiter gosh, re reiterating my main messages. Find a way to keep your club together that works for you and keeps your members engaged and comfortable and having fun. Keep an eye on what others are doing and don't be afraid to copy good ideas. Facebook posts uh, from around clubs around the district, around the country and around the world are an amazing source of ideas and knowledge and inspiration. It, it's really quite incredible what's out there. So plagiarise, just take other people's good ideas. Talk to Rotaractors. Um, as Geraldine was saying before, young people, they have great ideas and things are a bit new and different. It's wonderful. Reach out to other clubs and organisations and look for ways to collaborate. Try to stay visible in the community. Uh, this will be over at some point and uh, we still want to be around and we still want to be pillars of our local communities. Use this time to plan for future activities. Um, it means that we can actually think of things that we're going to do in the future, work out how to do them, and it gives us something for all members to look forward to. Use the technology and the resources that are available. And now is a really good time to try new things. It's a good excuse if you've been wanting to maybe do something a bit different for a while and, and maybe there's been a little bit of resistance, well, why not give it a try now when other things are all a little bit quiet? And finally, I'll leave you with a quote that's used in every presentation by Rotarians Against Malaria. If you think that you're too small to make a difference, you've never spent a night with a mosquito. So thank you, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you very much, Andrea, and uh, very good ending with that um, statement. Uh, look, we're, we're, we've only got a few minutes left and we want to just now talk a little bit about um, having fun in Rotary. And while Andrea's been talking and Boy, I hope you've all been taking notes because, wow, she was full of so much great ideas and information. I think you um, should write all that out and send it to us all because it was fantastic. Thank you. Um, Mark Wilson. It, it's, it is written out, Judy. I'm, oh, I good. could tell. I, I was reading. I don't speak oh, well. off the cuff very well, so I had to write. It's, it's a script, so I, I can make that available. Get hold of it. Thank if you. If anyone's interested. Um, Mark Wilson from Nowra. Now, I'm very interested to know how you hold a picnic at Hanging Rock event. Can you come on and tell us what you do, please? If you're still here. Uh-oh, perhaps he's disappeared. Went to the Hanging Rock too many times. I don't know. All right, nothing, nothing from Mark. He's not going to come up. Okay. What about Michael Raby? Would you like to just quickly tell us about your peace polls? I'm sure most people know about them, but it'd be nice just to hear as well if you're around and you can switch on your... I am here. I'll just... Here he is. Good. Um, oh, oh, hang on, what have I done? Just, just speak if, if you can. Oh, just speak. oh, you don't need to see me. Um, pretty exciting. Uh, this week we unveiled Peace Poll 19 of 100, which was a collaborative effort between Chris, uh, Brisbane Centenary, uh, Canberra Sunrise and Canberra Burley Griffin. And it's an octagonal poll uh, with... Um, the languages of each of the Rotary Peace Scholars for last year. And that's been placed in St Lucia in Queensland in the Rotary International President's Peace Park. Uh, so that's 19 of 100. But we have now reserved Peace Poll 108 of 100. So yeah. providing every club does what they say they will do and actually sees it through, uh, we will exceed our target. So therefore, don't despair. We would love to see Peace Poll 165 of 100. So uh, we're not going to stop producing them. We've got a fantastic man in, in uh, Geelong who's making aluminium poles. So uh, send us your, the name of your school, the languages you want, 
and they'll cost about 250 on average, including freight to get it into your town. Thanks, Judy. Well, thanks a lot, Michael. And I hope um, everybody takes you up on that. And every club, if you could all have your own peace call, wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, Joan Wilkin, I'm not sure what club you're from, but I'm very interested to hear about your year 12 surprise. I think this is lovely. Most people probably don't know about it. Can you come on and tell us a little bit more, please? Hello. Joan Wilkin, yes, good. Even yes, I'm from the Rotary Club of Coonabarabran. Oh, okay. 9650. So, we're a little bit larger than the size of 10. We have 23 members at the moment. And our local high school has had uh, all the same problems that every other high school has had in catering for their year 12 students and getting them through this year. And so we just came up with the idea of uh, collecting together as a club. Uh, and we had a great time actually writing the letters and um, quite a lot, a lot of laughs and a lot of memories about our own years at school and um, popped them into these cards and we had some spare money so we um, we had uh, $25 gift cards to throw in as well and and took them, took them up to the high school so I think they were uh, very well received. I bet. Well that's that is such a lovely idea and uh, I think that you know in this time kids really need a little bit of encouragement and, and to know that other people are thinking of them so well done I think that's a fabulous thing you've done. Uh, Judy McKee. Now, this is interesting. She, they do a wine and cheese tasting online. I'm just wondering how you get the glass of wine through your video and to the other person. Perhaps you can tell us, can you? Judy McKee. Um, yes. Um, well, what we did is we asked everybody to um, just come along with their wine and their food platter. Um, we had 100% turn up. Uh, I wrote a script as a sommelier and I got some characters within our club that I knew would ham it up. And so we went through, you know, um, wine, um, a couple of videos run on France and what it's like to live down there. And then we wrote scripts for each of our characters and they absolutely hammed it up. And we had a lovely time. And then we had raffled a bottle of wine. So um, it was a huge success and something we'll probably do again. Yeah. Well, I think that's something everybody could have a go at. I, I think that's a lovely idea. Wonderful. Well done. Thank you for sharing. Now, Joan Hart from the Upper Blue Mountain Sunrise Club, I'd like to know what you're talking about. You're inviting us to a um, trivia night. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Judy. Um, we are holding a trivia night on Saturday, the 26th of September. Everyone's invited. We're doing it via Zoom and Kahoot. So you need a phone and you need... Zoom on your computer. Uh, we have a project that is raising funds for tiny homes for homeless people in the mountains. So all the funds raised will go to that. So it's $20 per person and we encourage everybody to put their team together. You'll find us on Upper Blue Mountains, rotary.org.au. Okay, well, right, well, Thank we you. will certainly look at that and look forward to, to doing a trivia night with you all. Now, I think we might, we're very close to wrapping up. Uh, just before I pass back over to Mary, just to let you know our next session, which is next, I can't give you the date, I haven't got it in front of me, but certainly in October, our next person that we're going to have on this uh, monthly seminar is Barbara Mifsud from, from Parramatta. And uh, she is a very knowledgeable person about what's going on in the world with regards to membership and where, you know, the countries that are getting greater and the ones that are disappearing and all the rest of it. So she will give us some very, very interesting information and tell us what, what uh, RI is suggesting we do in the way of membership as well. So I will now pass back to Mary to sum up the lovely evening we've had. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Wow, what an evening. And in a short period of time, we've got so many, many ideas. At the very beginning of the evening, I mentioned to you that our seminar series is all about sharing ideas, making sure that our Rotarians in these really difficult times have, are still motivated and know there's still lots going on. So we start, there are three main components to tonight. Our first one was for you.
Now, it's wonderful that we've met Geraldine and we know what this young woman is about. We know that she's pretty excited to take on this role in 2022-23. So thank you, Geraldine, for being on board tonight and sharing your thinking and your, your value system with us and why it is that Rotary is important to you. But also importantly, you shared with us the information about millennials. Now, I think we have Paul in the background and we'll be able to share that, that slide with everyone a lot of research in this particular area. So I think if we need to get millennials on board, we need to take in their characteristics and what sort of things do they really want? And how can we work with them to make Rotary a surely diverse group? The second component of our evening this evening was to hear Andrea Grosvenor. And Andrea is one of our, our area governors. And each month we will have a district area governor. Last month we had Doug, Doug Kinley's side. This month we had um, and we will have a similar format with the next area governor sharing the ideas of what she's noticing and what they are noticing in their different districts. And finally, your ideas. And they've been coming through on the chat. How amazing. The things that are still going on in Rotary. And that's what Judy and I have been wanting to do with this series. We're still out there. We're still relevant. We're still valued and we're still useful, as Andrea said. So I'd like to thank you all for coming on board tonight you not just district 9705 but people from all over the districts and to hear somebody from Coonabarabran how great is that um, to hear what you're all doing so thank you everyone for sharing your thinking sharing your projects sharing the fact that Rotary is still fun Rotary is still relevant Rotary is still valued and Rotary is still useful thanks everyone it's just on time so that's it thanks everyone till next month bye Bye-bye.